Okay. Happy Thursday. How are we doing? Let's see. Always just like, are we working? Are we not? Hello. Happy Thursday. How are you doing? Can you hear me? Can you see me? Yesterday was Earth Day. Did you have a good Earth Day? Did you celebrate Earth Day in any way? I know that it was yesterday, but our book today is the perfect fit for Earth Day um, because it's about the rainforest. And that's all I'm going to tell you so far. Here's what I want to know. Tell me if you did anything special for Earth Day at all yesterday. I know that life's a little different right now. And so in our, our Earth Day yesterday, it was really, really, um, it didn't rain that much, but it was really cloudy. The weather wasn't great. We did see some really cool lightning last night and distant clouds um, that my kids thought was really, really cool. So that was fun. And we talked about a lot of the different creatures that we've seen on our adventures and travels and um, some of those fun things. But I know that some of you may not have been able to celebrate Earth Day or you could have celebrated it, but it's just a little different since we're not in the classroom. So I thought, let's do some Earth Day things today. But first, I want to go ahead and get started. Let's see. Do you want me to give you a little preview of what we're doing? How about that? Let's do a little preview while people are joining in and coming in for our lesson. So today we're going to read the story, The Great K-Pop Tree. It's one of my most favorite books. It's written by Lynn Cherry. We're going to read that in a little bit. Hopefully we'll have time at the end. You know, I love a drawing and I feel like the children want a drawing. You don't need anything for this lesson at all, except maybe a paper and pencil. So if you haven't, if you don't have that with you, you can go grab that while I'm just kind of buying time until people get in. So we're going to draw a toucan because you're going to see a toucan in the story that we um, read. And we'll talk about some interesting facts about toucans and the purpose that they play in the rainforest. Because remember, our story is set in the Amazon rainforest. So we're going to do that. And then we're also going to talk about sensory language. That sounds big and important, doesn't it? I kind of felt like, ooh, maybe I'm really smart because I know what sensory language is. But I bet I bet if you don't know that term, I bet you end up knowing what sensory language is. So are you ready? Okay. Now, first, let's think about sensory language because, you know, we're here to learn. We're here to have a good book. We're here to learn. We've got, we're here to have fun, really, but we've got to do some learning too, right? Okay. So sensory language. What word do you hear in the word sensory? Do you hear a familiar word? I hear a word that I'm familiar with. Let's see. Can you guess what it is? Let me see what we have in the comments here. Hmm. Do you hear the word senses? Well, you don't hear the word senses, but you can hear the word sense. And have you learned about the five senses. So if you have learned about the five senses, then I bet you're going to be a sensory language master. What do you think? You're going to be a pro. Okay. So here's what we need to know. I need to know what are the five senses? Do you know what they are? Can you help me? Because I got to teach this lesson about sensory language. I've got to know the five senses, right? Okay. So let me think. Let me think. Let's see. Tell me in the comments, what are the five senses? Let me see if I got this right. Mm, shaking. Is shaking a sense? Is that a sense? No, it's not. Okay, so here, here we go. We've got five senses. We've got the sense of sound or hearing, right? We have hearing. So we have words and sensory language that are going to tell us about sound, and we'll talk about sensory language in a minute. We've got the sense of touch or feeling. These little motions I'm doing are going to come into handy. We've got the sense of sight or seeing. We've got the sense of smelling. This is, I like to pretend I'm wafting a candle. Can you do that with me? You smell it. It smells so beautiful. Actually, I don't have a candle going, but I pretend. Oh, it's so beautiful. Um, and then we have the sense of taste. And this is what I like to do for taste because, oh, you know what? One thing I love more than anything is tasting yummy food. But sometimes we taste things and they're not so yummy. So we have hearing or the sound. We have sight. We have smell. We have touch. And we have 
tasting, right? Okay, so here's what the purpose of sensory language is. Authors use sensory language so that a reader can really experience what's going on in the book. It adds a lot of descriptive language so that you can actually, even though we can't smell what's in the book, unless you have a special smell book, we can really, really visualize what is being, what the characters are smelling or what the characters are seeing or hearing. So it's this language that really brings the book to life. And here's what's really cool is as you read books with really great sensory and descriptive language, then when you start writing books, because I sure hope you're doing some writing, you can add in sensory language so that your readers can really experience and connect and feel the story. It makes it all come to life, okay? So that's the purpose of sensory language, so that the reader can really experience what's happening in the book. Are you with me? Okay, so I wanna talk about something real quick before we start reading. Oh, I just got done popping this popcorn. I also had a little bit of popcorn for lunch. It's not a very typical lunch, but you know what? Who cares? Because it was delicious. Okay, so popcorn's a really good thing to think about whenever you're thinking about sensory language, especially if you can think about popping popcorn, okay? So first of all, let's just talk about what do we see when we think of popcorn? What are some things that you see? You see the color. It's like a yellow and white. It's puffy, right? What are some other things that you see? What are some sensory language examples we can use for seeing popcorn? I want you to think about that. It's colorful, it's yellow, it's puffy. Okay, now let's go to another one. Think about smelling. Oh, I wish you could smell this right now. It smells so delicious. Smelling the popcorn. It smells, it smells delightful is what it does, but it smells buttery. What else do you smell when you smell popcorn? Tell me what you smell. Mm, maybe you could even pop some popcorn later if your parents let you, and you could do this with popcorn. So it smells buttery. It smells delicious. Mm, let's see, what are some other things that I heard? Obviously, I'm not hearing anything whenever I'm just holding it, but whenever I popped it, I heard pop, crack, boom. And when I eat it, I hear crunch, crunch. Crunch, those are all, all words that tell us how it sounds, right? I know, I'm making you want popcorn. It's delicious and delightful. I can't wait to eat it when I get off of this, reading this story. Okay, so we've talked about what it looks like, what it sounds like, what it smells like. What do you, now we all have different opinions here, but let's talk about what it tastes like. It tastes yummy, delicious, salty, buttery, or maybe you have like a sweet kind of popcorn mm, and it tastes sweet. Let's see. Now let's think we let's think about what it feels like because we've talked to I think we've talked about the other ones. I'm running through my senses. What does it feel like? It's crunchy, right? Um, it's greasy. If you've ever dealt with popcorn, it, it's very, very I don't know why I did that before I'm touching my book. Um, it feels it also feels like light and airy. It, a popcorn's not very heavy. So those are some really good things to think about. When I think about sensory language, I always think about popcorn because you experience it popping, right? And if you have some kind of a popcorn maker or just in the microwave or maybe at the movies, you can hear it. You can really hear popcorn. Plus you can see and taste and smell and feel it. So it's a really good thing to think about when you're thinking about sensory language. So pop you some popcorn and I want you to really experience it with all of your five senses. Now, we're gonna keep all of those things in mind when we read our story, The Great K-Pop Tree. But whenever we hear sensory language, there's a few things we're gonna do, okay? And then I'm gonna jump into it, I promise. We're going to, when we hear sensory language, words that describe how things look, sight words, we're gonna go whoosh. You don't have to make a noise because I'll be reading, but I like to do that, whoosh. So when we see words that tell about how things look, describe how they look. We're going to do this. Got it? Can you do it with me? Whoosh. Okay. When we hear, we're going to hear a lot of sound words. We're going to cup our ears like this. So when we hear words that describe the way things look, whoosh, the way things sound, cup your ears. Okay. The next thing is the way things feel. We're going to do this with our fingers for feel. So we've got sight, sound, feel. 
I'm not sure if you might find some taste words in here. There's not a bunch, but we can still think about it, right? Taste, we're going to do this. And then for the way things smell, there are a few. We're going to do this. Okay, so let's review those. Our sensory language, we have sight, hear, smell, feel, and taste, okay? All right, are you ready to get started? Do you think that you can find some examples of sensory language in the book with me? I sure hope so because... There are lots of examples. That's why I picked this book with sensory language because it was perfect. Okay, so here's our story. It's The Great K-Pop Tree. It's written by Lynn Cherry. And I bet you can see some of the animal that we're gonna encounter in the book. I'm gonna get up here really close so you can see the pictures. Oh, I love this book. Are you ready? Okay, remember we're looking for sensory language and it's really going to paint a picture of what's happening in this book so that you can really feel like you're there in the rainforest with these animals and these characters, okay? All right, here we go. I like it to where you can see it really well. Two men walked into the rainforest. Moments before, the forest had been alive with the sounds of squawking birds and howling monkeys. Now all was quiet. As the creatures watched the two men and wondered why they had come. The larger man stopped and pointed to the great K-pop tree. Then he left. So here you can see the men that are visiting the rainforest and the creatures are like, why are they here? Why are they in our home? Okay, I'm going to show you this picture while I read because the text is on the other side. Do you see that coming down the tree? Oh my goodness, I didn't even notice that. The smaller man took the axe he carried and he struck the trunk of the tree. Whack! 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 Sound words. The sounds of the blows rang through the forest. The wood of the tree was very hard. How it felt. Chop! 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 The man wiped off the sweat that ran down his face and neck. Whack! Chop! Whack! Chop! Soon the man grew tired. He sat down to rest at the foot of the great K-pop tree. Before he knew it, the heat and the hum of the forest had lulled him to sleep. I don't know about you, but I was thinking, oh my goodness, this tree is coming down. What are we going to do? There's animals all around it. Thankfully, he got tired. Oh, I was getting stressed out. Okay, here we go. Oh my goodness. Can you imagine that coming up on you when you were asleep? A boa constrictor lived in the K-pop tree. He slithered down its trunk to where the man was sleeping. He looked at the gash the axe had made in the tree. Then the huge snake slid very close to the man and hissed in his ear. Senor, this tree is a tree of miracles. It is my home where generations of my ancestors have lived. Do not chop it down. You know what? I wish the man would just wake up and run away and not chop down those trees with the snake in his face. Oh, that would be good. He's still sleeping though. A bee buzzed in the sleeping man's ear. Buzz, buzz, buzz. Oh, did you hear? Buzzed. Senor, my hive is in this K-pop tree, and I fly from tree to tree and flower to flower collecting pollen. In this way, I pollinate the trees and flowers throughout the rainforest. You see, all living things depend on one another. Just look at all of those beautiful, beautiful insects. So the, the snake came around and he said, this is my home. This is a tree of many miracles do not chop it down then the bee came and he said this is my my hive is in this tree and then i i fly from tree to tree and flower to flower collecting pollinate this is how i pollinate all of the flowers and trees throughout the rainforest we all depend on it do not chop it down oh look who's coming next a troop of monkeys scampered down from the canopy of the k-pop tree they chattered to the sleeping man Senor, we have seen the ways of man. You chop down one tree, then come back for another and another. The roots of these great trees will wither and die, and there will be nothing left to hold the earth in place. 
When the heavy rains come, the soil will be washed away and the forest will become a desert. They travel all over the rainforest and they know what happens when one gets chopped down. Oh, there's our toucan. Do you remember our toucan I showed you? A toucan, a macaw, and a cock of the rock flew down from the canopy. Senor, squawked the toucan, you must not cut down this tree. We have flown all over the rainforest. I've seen what happens when you begin to chop down the trees. Many people will settle on the land. They set fires to clear the underbrush, and soon the forest disappears. Where there once was life and beauty only, black and smoldering ruins remain. Those will, that tells us what the rainforest will look like if they chop the trees down. Because then people come to live and they set things on fire. And it where there once was beauty and black, now there's only black and smoldering ruins. Those are a lot of sight words there. A bright and small tree frog. Let's get you real close. Oh, a bright and small tree frog crawled along the edge of a leaf. In a squeaky voice, he piped in the man's ear. Senor, a ruined rainforest means ruined lives. Many ruined lives. You will leave many of us homeless if you chop down this great K-pop tree. Wait, where are the where are the frogs going to live if they if he chops it down? <gasps> this is one of my favorites. Oh, look at this beautiful jaguar. Can you imagine that big old cat being in your face? A jaguar had been sleeping along a branch in the middle of the tree because his spotted coat blended into the dappled light and shadows of the understory. No one had noticed him. Now he leapt down and patted silently over to the sleeping man. He growled in his ear, Senor, the Kapok tree is home to many birds and animals. If you cut it down, where will I find my dinner? I think I would say, okay, bye. I don't want to mess with the jaguar, do you? I don't want to mess with the snake either, though. Oh, who do we have now? Four tree porcupines swung down from branch to branch and whispered to the man, Senor, do you know what the animals, oh, they're whispering. I'm sorry. Let's start this over. Sometimes we make mistakes. Senor, do you know what the animals and humans need in order to live? Oxygen. And Senor, do you know what trees produce? Oxygen. If you cut down the forest, you will destroy that which gives us all life there now they're saying you know what we all need oxygen even you need oxygen oh who's next several anteaters climbed down to the kapok tree with their young clinging to their backs the unstriped anteater said to the sleeping man senor you are chopping down this tree with no thought for the future and surely you know what the, what happens tomorrow depends on what you do today the big man tells you to chop down a beautiful tree. He does not think of his own children who tomorrow must live in a world without trees. So the anteaters are saying, you need to think about the future. Imagine a world without the trees. Oh, who's next? A three-toed sloth, I know so many of you love sloths, had been climbing down from the canopy when the man men first appeared. Only now did she reach the ground, because you know sloths are quite slow, plodding ever so slowly over to the sleeping man. She spoke in her deep and lazy voice, cupping the ear. Sorry, I messed up on there. Senor, how much is beauty worth? Can you live without it? If you destroy the beauty of the rainforest, on what would you feast your eyes? They're all making really valid points. A child from the Yanomama tribe who lived in the rainforest knelt over the sleeping man. He murmured in his ear, Senor, when you awake, Please look upon us all 
with new eyes. Okay, I want you to make a prediction. The man's been asleep this whole time. The animals have been coming down trying to persuade him not to chop down the trees, to look at this in a new way. What do you think will happen? Do you think that the man will go about and do his job? Or do you think he will something will change? Make a prediction. The man awoke with a start. Before him stood the rainforest child, and all around him staring were the creatures who depended upon the great kapok tree. What wondrous and rare animals they were. Can you imagine waking up with all of these animals around you? Oh, what a sight that would be. The man looked about and saw the sun streaming through the canopy. Spots of bright light glowed like jewels amidst the dark green forest. That one sentence is so full of descriptive sensory language. I'm going to read it again. Spots of bright light glowed like jewels amidst the dark green forest. I can just imagine how the water and everything's coming in, the light's coming in, and it's just sparkling and all the green from the rainforest. Strange and beautiful plants seem to dangle in the air, suspended from the great K-pop tree. The man smelled the fragrant, fragrant, sorry, perfume of their flowers. He felt the steamy mist rising from the forest floor, but he heard no sound, for the creatures were strangely silent. So it all's a little different now. He woke up from the start. It's like he's seeing it in a new way that he hadn't seen it before. He's smelling the fragrant, fragrant perfume of their flowers. He's feeling the steamy mist. And he, it sounds strangely silent. What do you think the man is going to do? The man stood up and picked up his axe. He swung back his arms as though to strike the tree. Suddenly, he stopped. He turned and looked at the animals and the child. Did you think he was about to keep going on his work? I was getting a little worried. He hesitated. Look. Then he dropped the axe and walked out of the rainforest. Isn't that a beautiful story about animals who really need the rainforest to survive and what a vital role it plays and how it, you can, the man changed his mind because that was his job. Think of how hard that would be to have to walk away from your job but to do it for the right reason. Okay, I want you, I want to read you this um, note from the author. She says, Dear readers, I wrote the great K-pop tree to let the world know what happened to the rainforest creatures and to the entire planet when rainforest forests are destroyed. I hope that after reading this book, you will help save the rainforest. The great K-pop tree is about the Amazon rainforest, a tropical rainforest, but we have a temperate rainforest in the Pacific Northwest of the United States that we must protect too. Please care for Mother Earth. Together, we can make a difference. And isn't that what Earth Day is all about? Caring for our Earth and doing what we can to make a difference. And sometimes it's just knowing and understanding what's going on so that then we can do our role and our part to help take care of the earth. Okay, so did you hear a lot of sensory language in there? I didn't hear any of taste, but I might have missed it, but you might see it in other books. So that's what I wanted you to, to look for. What I wanna challenge you with is to be looking for sensory language. Remember, words that tell us about how things look, sound, smell, feel, and taste. When you're reading books, and then I especially want to challenge you to then try to use those in your writing when you're writing stories or making books or whatever you're doing, even if you're writing a, a letter or a note to someone, what can you add to really bring that to life so that they can really feel and experience? Because I don't know about you, but I felt like I was in the rainforest right in that great K-pop tree with the characters. I felt like the animals were really brought to life with all of the descriptive language that the author used. This is a great example for that. 
Okay, so that's what I challenge you to do. But now let's look at one of the characters a little bit more specifically. Let's go to the character, the toucan, who came to the um, man with some other birds, right? Okay, so there are several different kinds of toucans I learned whenever I was researching them, and I hope that you'll research them too. I have some um, links and a download that I put on the Facebook video that you can find some toucan research. But the toucan said, you must not cut down this tree. We have flown over the rainforest and we see what happens once you begin to chop down the trees. The toucan plays a vital role in the rainforest. You want me to tell you a fact that I learned about toucans? So toucans eat um, fruits, right? So they eat fruits, they digest the fruits, and then they fly around the rainforest. Well, I don't know if you know this or not, but animals after they eat sometimes they release right <laughs> you if you've ever had been around a bird or seen a bird in your neighborhood they release droppings right and that helps to plant other seeds it helps the rainforest to grow because the toucan eats fruits and then releases its droppings and it helps the rainforest so there are several different types of toucans toucans have really large beaks I believe I read that a toucan's beak is four times the size of its head, which can you imagine having this huge thing off that off of your face that was four times the size of your face? You'd think it'd be kind of uncomfortable, right? Okay, so let's look at how to draw a toucan. Are you ready? I only have a few minutes left, so I need you to be ready. Now, you can draw your toucan however you would like. I'm just going to simply show you how I did it. it. Took me a little while to get it down because its beak is rather large. So we're going to start with this line right here because it kind of anchors everything. It anchors the head and it anchors the beak. All right. And then you can research some toucan facts um, and maybe write, write some things about toucans with your sensory language. You can especially describe the way they look because some of them are very, very colorful. We're going to do a straight line. Our paper is horizontal. We're going to do a straight line in the right hand corner. Well, we leave some space for the head, but it's over towards this side of the paper. Just like that. Got it? Okay, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna do the curved line. It's gonna go from the top of this down here, kind of like a backward C. We're not closing anything. We're just doing like a backward C right here. See that? It almost looks like a D that's not closed because we're gonna need a curved line that goes the other way. We're gonna do a curved line that's coming this way to connect these two points. You ready? So we're connecting this line to this line with the curved line that's actually in the direction of a C. Just like that. Doesn't look much like a toucan yet, does it? Not yet. Okay, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna finish off the face. So we're gonna go from this top point and just do a curved line to the uh, edge of our page. And we're gonna do the same thing at this bottom point, do a curved line to the edge of the page. So now we have the head, and now we're gonna do the beak. Okay, the beak is really large like we talked about. Um, so you're gonna go from this, see where these three lines meet? We're gonna go and we're gonna curve it all the way down to this far corner a really, really large curve line. Now we have to do another curve line and we have to come to this point right here of where those two lines met. We're gonna do another curve line to meet this one down here. Just like that. Mine's looking a, a little crazy, but it's kind of hard to draw fun ways. Don't judge me, okay? Now we have to do the inner part of the beak, so we're just gonna do like a small curve line right in there. And then the one that I drew has this black um, tip to the beak, so I just did a little bitty U right there. And now all we have left is the eye. So the one I drew has this large orange patch uh, around the eye. And then it has a beautiful blue eye inside. So I did a large oval for the um, feathers that are on the outside. And then I did another oval inside for the eye. 
I'm going to show you my other one because it's much better. Okay. <laughs> Here's the other one. So whenever I was researching, there are two cans of all different colors. And if you download that on my blog on amylemons.com, I'm giving you some websites to research. So your, you may want to color yours differently. The one in the book, let me show you the one in the book because it looked, it actually looked different than this one too. I just chose one and colored it like that. Um, let's see, here it is. So this one actually has some blue on its beak that this, uh, that they used when they were drawing that toucan. But you can research facts about toucans, you can draw your toucan, and then you can use sensory language to describe your toucan. I hope that you love the great K-pop tree. I hope that you enjoy drawing the toucan, and I hope that you continue to use all of that sensory language. See you next time. Bye.